This might make AMD unstoppable. Snapchat Plus is here for you and Valve is downgrading the Steam Deck. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're gonna start off today with a huge upgrade, potentially that might be coming to our DNA 3 GPUs or the RX 7000 series that might make AMD good. Like really good, like on par better than NVIDIA good, all right? Because NVIDIA cards have a couple of different things. They have CUDA cores, they have ray tracing cores, and then they have tensor cores, which helps with the AI upscaling that they do for things like DLSS. Well, there's new reports coming out that AMD is adding a wave matrix multiply accumulate support to RDNA 3's architecture, which if you know anything about the tensor cores, that's exactly what they do. They do matrix multiplication maps in order to come out with all of the AI processing that they do. So this GFX 11, which is RDNA 3, will have WMMA instruction support, which might not sound cool on the front end, but if you take a look behind the scenes with all of the advancements AMD has been making with things like their FSR technology, this could potentially lead to not just FSR 2.0 being platform agnostic, but potentially having an update to FSR 2.0 that would make Make it hardware accelerated by the next generation of GPUs, which would mean that we would get better than native support for this with upscaling happening and faster frame rates, which would mean that the advantage NVIDIA has with their DLSS would be null and void and the goodness that has been coming out from FSR 2.0 would still work on Intel and NVIDIA GPUs, but it would be faster on AMD GPUs, which would mean that it would just, it would have better product support. This is something that AMD has needed for their GPUs, where Nvidia has handedly beat them over the last several years. If they add this, if this is real, which it definitely is real, but the difficulty is knowing whether or not this is gonna be implemented in the FSR acceleration. But if it is real, this could be a big step up for AMD. This could be like a game changer, where like playing at 4K 120 FPS might not be so unrealistic with like a mid high to your card. This could be this could be big. Let me know what you think of the potential of hardware accelerated FSR down below in the comments. I want to hear from you. I'm excited for it. That's that's my position of it right now. And are you excited for the next generation of CPUs coming from Intel? Well, ASRock is updating their BIOS to support it. 13th gen support happening on the motherboards. What does that mean for future release dates? Nothing, we, we still don't know, but it means it's happening. There's gonna be a 13th gen. Intel is not skipping it, skipping it because it's a uh, bad lucky, unlucky number. Is 13 unlucky or lucky? He can't hear me, he has a mask on. But you might wanna watch out if you're using Windows Defender if you have an Intel CPU because there's reports coming out that it actually can impact Intel CPU performance by the tune of four to 6% depending on the actual CPU you're using because there's a bug in Windows Defender that will randomly start using all seven hardware performance counters provided by Intel Core processors and then it'll randomly change the privilege levels of these and make it so it's like not predictable and the there's no way to understand when this is gonna happen. So a bug fix will likely be coming for this for Windows Defender to not impact Intel CPUs. It currently does not have any impact on Ryzen chips, uh, but the suggestion right now is that you turn off Windows Defender, which I guess you can if you already have some sort of other antivirus, but just uh, be careful out there, my friends. You couldn't, you couldn't possibly do with 5% less performance on your Intel CPU in order to make sure that your PC is safe. It's not, it's not a reasonable trade-off. And is crypto a reasonable trade-off? I don't know, you guys have your opinions on that, but let's talk about crypto stocks. Bitcoin up a little bit to be at $20,306. It's up half a percent. Ethereum down 3.5% on the other hand to be at $1,116. And Dogecoin up 6% to be at just over seven cents. And I'm just over being here. So I'm gonna let Reese bring you the UFD deals. Hostech deals out on the internet, go boy.
Go. Hey friends, Reese here, bringing you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Today's deal is the Samsung T7 external SSD. This is the one terabyte version with USB 3.2 Gen 2 and a solid aluminum shell. You can pick it up in black, red or blue for $109.99, which is currently 21% off. You can find today's deal and more in the link in the video description. Cheers. And you know what might be a deal? Snapchat Plus coming in at $4 a month to offer people who are uh, passionate users of Snapchat. How many? Passionate Snapchat users are there out there? I, like, I was talking with Kyler about this earlier. It seems to be that uh, Snapchat users are reluctant, like kind of legacy, almost just like they've been on the platform and why would they move on? Anyways, Snapchat Plus, for you passionate folk who are in the US, Canada, the UK, France, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates, will get exclusive features, such as the ability to change your app icon. You can see who rewatched a story and pin a friend to the top of your chat history as a BFF. My goodness, that's $4 worth a month right there. But in case you want to spend your money on something actually useful, uh, repairing your phone, making sure that you don't go and buy a new one every single year or throw it out just because you cracked the screen. Google and iFixit making good on the announced partnership that they said that they were going to have with the parts now becoming available over on iFixit's website with the direct collaboration between these two companies, the iFixit Google Pixel Repair as you can see here is up on the iFixit website. And not only can you buy parts such as the Pro Rear Camera for the Google 6 Pro, all of that goodness, but then you also have iFixit's repair guides, which will help you go step by step in order to make sure that the repairs happen. This is a good thing for the world. This is a good thing for Google. This is a good thing for Google's customers. I'm a fan of it. And I was kind of a fan of Sony's new gaming monitors yesterday when we talked about how they were leaked. Well, a few hours after I recorded the episode of Hot News, Sony officially unveiled their in-zone monitors and the pricing is not as bad as I indicated yesterday. It might be a little pricier over in wherever they use the, the Euro, but here in the States, it's actually, uh, it's better, but not great. So it's the Inzone M9 and M3 monitors. You can see the design of it here kind of fitting in with the PlayStation design aesthetic that they have. This will be sold under the Sony brand though, not PlayStation brands, kind of differentiating there. The odd thing about this stand design is that the like tripod leg comes forward, which I haven't seen on many monitors. Typically it goes to the rear, but uh, it's gonna accentuate its third leg apparatus at you so that you stare at it all the time. Pricing on the M9, which is the 4K 144 hertz screen is $900. The 1080p 240 hertz screen is gonna be $530 available sometime this year. However, one of the things I didn't mention in yesterday's episode was that the M9 will have full array local dimming on the actual uh, monitor, so that will make it slightly better, but it also has those TV features such as auto HDR tone mapping, etc. It seems fine. They're also announcing some headsets that you could potentially get, again, with the same design language. And they also released this hilariously mediocre ad for their in-zone gaming products, as they're calling them. I'll leave a link in the video description. You should watch it. It's odd. They also have a little ad that they came out with for their monitors where they portray 60 hertz as if it's like three FPS. Like I'm watching this on a 60 hertz panel and you're going to tell me that the 60 hertz that I was looking at is is looking like. OK, OK, Sony, you you good. You go with your marketing and Hyundai, you go with your EVs. My goodness. OK. Hear me out. Hyundai is announcing their Ionic 6, which is uh, it's it's controversial to say the least. I really like it. I kind of really want one, um, but just prepare yourself because the Ionic 6 EV is a teardrop design that they're going for, which I kind of love. It started as a concept car called Prophecy, and now they've turned it into a real production vehicle. As of the time of recording, we don't have the specs such as the range, the price, the horsepower, anything like that. Hyundai is supposed to be having an event today in order to come out with more of that. It's just not available as I'm recording. But as you can see here, it has a really unique design. It kind of slightly reminds me of a Porsche from the rear, but you can see on the inside, it has a whole bunch of infotainment screens. The, the back in. It has like a dual spoiler situation going on. I really like it. And I don't know why exactly. Like it 
it's hitting the right spot for me where I would consider picking one of these bad boys up. I can understand why people might think it's ugly though. Uh, some of the details that are announced about it is the fact that it has a drag coefficient of only 0.21, which is actually remarkably efficient thanks to the design that they're coming out with, as well as that dual spoiler back design in order to make sure that the airflow passes around the car to make the car super efficient. But as soon as we get more details on the Ionic 6, I'll bring it here to Hot News for you. And we've got more details about the Steam Deck. It's worse. At least some of them are. Because it's been found that Valve is quietly downgrading the SSDs on the Steam Deck, the 256 and 512 gig models, because the 64 gig is not an SSD, it's EMMC. Anyways, it turns out that Valve has started to ship the Steam Decks, not with PCI Express 3.0 by four SSDs, but rather by two SSDs, meaning that it only uses two lanes instead of four lanes, which would mean that they're half the speed of the original PCI Express 4.0 SSDs. Some research being done on this indicates that Valve actually updated their website for this back at the end of May. So it's only just been about a month that they said that they're gonna start shipping it with the by two. However, they're saying that it does not have any impact to gaming performance, which I believe, especially because you, many people are using the micro SD card slot in order to play their games and boot times are roughly okay on the Steam Deck with that. So dropping two PCI Express lanes on the SSD likely isn't gonna impact loading times very much. It already seems like it's actually rather quick. I do think it's a little, I don't know, rough that Valve is updating this after the fact. When I put in my pre-order, I was told I was getting a buy four SSD. The fact that it is no longer going to guaranteed to be the case and I could potentially get a buy two SSD uh, feels a little facetious to me. I'm not gonna, you know, throw an uproar or get really upset about it. It's just uh, probably because I'll upgrade to one terabyte anyways. I just, it, it, it feels, like they could have communicated this publicly and you know gone ahead and said hey there's a ssd shortage we're going to give users the option if you're okay with being downgraded we've seen no gaming performance just let us know or we'll reach out to you to let you know that this is happening but the fact that they're not and they're just secretly doing it a little off to me anyways you can find out whether or not you have the buy two or the buy four by following the instructions that are at this website which we'll leave linked in the video description but let me know what you think of valve switching out the SSDs on the Steam Deck. Does it bother you? Do you wish there was better communication? Again, in my opinion, I really don't think that this is something that like needs to be a huge deal, but I just like they could do better in the future. That's my opinion. And I'm going to try to do better in the future with the next episode of Hot News that I do. Trying to get better every single day, my friends. I'll catch you for more hot tech news tomorrow.